I looked down the street in both directions. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street, I turned my light on, I searched, I searched, I called their names. I talked to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there, he didn't see anyone. So he left at 1633 and he's back by 1638. He's punching it, bro. Yeah, yeah, he's moving. Look at that. For people who are thinking uh, that there's some kind of foul play involved, um, you know, we just spoke to the biological mother. She says she had a conversation with you guys um, and that she thinks there's some kind of foul play involved, that she thinks you guys did something. And that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. The community is scared, confused, and angry, and so is the biological mother of both boys. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> where are they? Ultimately, the answer to the question of where are the boys will be answered. It's that they're dead. And at the end of the case, I will ask you to return a verdict of guilty beyond a reasonable doubt as to Trezell and Jacqueline for the murders of Orrin and Orson West. A grand jury indicted the West, the adoptive parents of Orrin and Orson in March 2022. Their attorneys have said the couple had nothing to do with the boys' disappearance. The bodies of Orrin and Orson have not been found. We're on the 19th day of the trial in the case against Trezell and Jacqueline West. The entire grand jury testimony of the West's eldest child is going to be read into the court record, with attorneys and the judge reading different parts. Attorney R. L. Hutchinson is reading the responses of the child while Fatima Rodriguez, one of the attorneys representing Jacqueline West, is reading the responses of the interviewer. The boy said he went to first grade and then he was homeschooled. He identified a photo of Jacqueline West as his mother and said she taught him. He identified a photo of his father and said he's nice and smart. The boy listed his other brothers, including Orrin and Orson. The interviewer asked about his brothers getting in trouble and how they were disciplined. The boys said they had lived in an apartment in Bakersfield near Casa Loma Elementary. The boys said Orrin and Orson would be all in the room where all the boys slept together while the other children were homeschooled. The boys said, we all had a bed on a floor, a mattress with a pillow. They all slept on the mattresses on the floor except for Orson, who slept in a crib, he said. The boy identified photos of Orrin and Orson. He said Orrin would cry a lot for no reason. He said his parents would place him in a room in time out when he cried. He said he doesn't remember how long they lived in Bakersfield. He said he doesn't know why they moved, but they went to California City. The boy identified photos of rooms in the Cal City home. He talked about how he and his brothers, with the exception of Orrin and Orson, would go to school room where they were homeschooled. A video was played for the boy and he said he made it using Zoom and some of his other brothers were in it. The boy said the watch used to be his dad's, but he gave it to him. He said he thinks it's at his grandmother's house now. He doesn't have it. The boy described the bunk beds put together by his father, Trezell West. He said he made them after they moved in. He described the bunks used by him, another child, and Orson. The boy said another room is for two of his other brothers and Orrin. He said all of us moved to the house, including Orrin and Orson. He said all of them were there when the pest control guy sprayed. No, the boy said, when asked if he knows where Orrin and Orson are. He said they were both in the van when the rest of the children were dropped off at their grandmother's a few days before Christmas. According to previous testimony, this was on December 19th, 2020. Asked about previously saying he saw Orrin was sick, the boy said he heard gagging one night from Orrin. He said he went to bed. Then the next morning, he and three of his brothers went to their laptops. The boy said his parents went and checked on Orrin. They were there for a while, then came out and spoke with him, he said. He said he doesn't remember what they told him. He said he forgets what happened, but didn't see Orrin later and thinks he went to his grandmother's house. 
The boy said they moved to Cal City a little while after Oren was dropped off. He said he next saw him a few days before Christmas. The boy said they brought Oren back for a few days before Christmas. He said he thinks his dad went to pick him up. He said Oren was at his grandmother's, Jacqueline West's mother's, for a while. He said he found out the boys were missing a few days before Christmas. He said he doesn't remember what he told police. The boy said he doesn't remember what he previously said about Oren and Orson. A video of the boy's interview with Cal City Police Officer Brian Hansen was played for the boy. He said he told Hansen he hadn't seen Oren or Orson for weeks because they got dropped off at Grandma's house. The boy talked again about hearing Oren gagging one night. He said his parents never talked with him about it and he doesn't know about Oren being sick. They played the video of the boy telling a social worker his parents told him Oren had died. He said they asked him if they should tell anyone. He said Oren was on the floor. Asked about when his grandmother on his father's side watched them in Cal City as they moved, the boy said only he and the three other boys were present, not Oren and Orson. The interviewer asked how he felt about having a bed for Orson in his room, even though he knew he wasn't there. Like he would come back, the boy said. The boy told the grand jury he heard a bump in the night in the Cal City home and Orson wasn't there the next day. The boy talked about Oren and how his color was fading. His skin seemed dry the night after he heard him gagging. He said there was vomit. Oren was motionless, according to the boy's testimony. He said Orson disappeared about a week and four days later. They're done reading the transcript and court is in recess for 15 minutes. Back in session, Alexia Torres Stallings, lead counsel for Jacqueline West, is going to play several videos. The first video is of Officer Brian Hansen interviewing the eldest son on December 22nd, 2020. The next videos are from interviews with the eldest child on December 28, 2020. Social worker Sonia Barton asked him what he smelled when Orrin had died. He says he didn't smell anything. A minute later, he says he did smell something, but couldn't tell what it was. The boy asked the social worker if his parents have enough food because there is police tape surrounding the house. That video has ended and another one is about to be played. Court is breaking for lunch early and won't return until 1.45 p.m. Judge Charles R. Brimmer said they're getting close to the end of the trial. The audio did not resume after the recess. Court will resume tomorrow at 9 a.m.